Praise and glory be to the all-merciful God, the one who provides for you, regardless of whether you believe in him or not. And peace and blessings be upon his noble prophets and messengers. Welcome back to another episode of our show, Beloved Acquaintances. And just to recap on the purpose of this series, people, we're talking about the prophet's companions. We call them beloved because we want a generation of our men, women, and youth to be tied to this first generation. We want people to stand up for Islam and make amazing contributions to this religion in a similar manner that the companions did. And today's show is about one such companion who made great contributions from the first minute that he accepted Islam. And his name is at tufail bin Amr al-Dawsi. And at tufail is from the tribe of Daws in Yemen. And he was an important figure in the tribe. He was a gifted poet and his people respected him highly. Now Tufail used to visit Mecca often. And on one such visit, as he made his way into the city, he says he was approached by some men from Quraysh. They said to him, Tufail, we gotta warn you man, you gotta stay away from this guy who claims to be a prophet. His speech is like magic. His words are dividing between husband and wife, between man and his brother. Whatever you do, just don't listen to him. Ignore him, for your sake and for the sake of your people. Tufail says they warned me so much that I was like, yo man, this guy's dangerous. I should avoid him at any cost. Now Quraysh knew exactly what they were doing. They knew who Tufail was. They knew the kind of influence he could have over his people. So they didn't want Tufail to have any contact with the Prophet whatsoever. Because if he converted to Islam, it would be a big blow to them. So with this grave warning, At-Tufail left the group and went over to the Kaaba to pay tribute to the hundreds of gods that were housed inside. And guess who he found praying out loud at the Kaaba? The man he was just warned about. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. So he took note of him and made every effort to avoid him. But God has his ways, people. And after trying to avoid him, At-Tufail said to himself, I'm a poet, man. If his words are indeed magical, then I would be the first to know. So he approached the Prophet, peace be upon him, and began to listen in. And he says it was the most beautiful thing that I've ever heard in my life. So the Prophet got up and started walking towards his house. And At-Tufail followed him. He had to follow him. He just heard something that was out of this world. As he reached the door, At-Tufail called out to the Prophet from behind him and said, O Muhammad, tell me about your religion. So the Prophet started telling him. And At-Tufail accepted Islam right there and then. He heard the stereotypes, but he decided to look into the matter for himself. And he removed the blindfold and examined Islam objectively. I wonder what the most beautiful thing you've ever heard in your life was. I know for some girls... It's a love poem written by a guy. For some guys, it's, Yo, man, your new haircut is wicked, or your muscles are really amazing. For a tufail, though, it was the words of God. Alright, a brother just accepted Islam. First moments of his conversion, what do you think he did? What was the first thing he did? He said, Order me, O prophet of God. Don't forget, people, this guy's a big character in his tribe, eh? He was one of the noblemen of the tribe of Daus. Tufail, your first words were, Order me, O prophet of God? Are you serious? How long does order me, O prophet of God, take us to say? How long? Hijab? I'm going to wait till I'm 55, you know. But, but sister, it's an order from your creator and your prophet. I know, but, but I'm going to wait till my faith is complete. Just till 55, that's all, I swear. You're going to stay the major part of your life ignoring God's command? Order me, O prophet of God. How long does it take some of us guys to end the haram relationship with a girl? Yeah, I know, I know it's wrong, but, but it's tough. Three years, brother? Three years to end it? Why? At-Tufail testified that there was no God but Allah, and that Muhammad was his messenger. And the first word that came out of his mouth was, Order me, O Prophet of God. Is it that we haven't tasted the beauty of the Qur'an? We don't know its true meaning? Is it that our relationship with the Prophet is not as strong as it should be? In other words, we're not aware of what this man went through to deliver God's message to us. And so when he asks us to do something, we don't comply immediately, simply out of our love for him. Or is it that we have this impression that being religious means being unsuccessful and uncool, not smiling at all, you know. Or maybe we feel that religion is really tough on us. And we're unaware of the fact that everything God and his prophet asked of us is for our own sake, so that we can be happy at heart and mind. Whatever the reasons... At-Tufail spent like 15 minutes with the Prophet, and he was right at his service. What did the Prophet tell At-Tufail? He said, Tufail, go back to your tribe and invite them to Islam. So At-Tufail returns to Daus and begins work on this mission. 
The first person to answer his call was his father and then his wife. Do you realize how strong his relationship with his family is? It must have been strong if they followed his ways right away. Yo, we're missing out on such strong relationships. I wish such beautiful bonds between parents and children, between husband and wife would return. Atufal told his dad that I followed the Prophet and his religion orders so and so. The father said, son, your religion is my religion. The wife said the same thing. Remember in the olden times how families used to all eat together on the same table? They do things together and stuff? Now everybody's stuck in their own room, nobody sees each other. <laughs> I remember I had a friend back when I was in grade 9, and his much older brother used to know my dad. And one day, they were talking about us, and the guy was surprised to learn that his younger brother was 14. He told my dad, are you sure? I thought he was 7. Anyways, there was a third person that followed the Tufail, and he's a real famous companion. Let me give you a hint and see if you could guess who he is. He used to take care of this cat and feed it and take it around with him. You know who he is? Abu Huraira. Man, At-Tufal played a role in Abu Huraira's conversion? Yep. You know what that means? That means every single good deed that Abu Huraira did, At-Tufal also got rewarded for it. But after Abu Huraira, nobody accepted Islam. The tribe of Daus refused to listen to At-Tufal. They rejected him with arrogance. So At-Tufal decided to go back and see the Prophet of God. But this time, he wasn't going alone. He took Abu Huraira with him. He took his brother in faith along. Yo, you guys know the feeling of playing a role in bringing somebody closer to God? Try and put this as an objective for yourself around your friends. Alright, this summer, my objective is to try and get my friends to love God. You may have done lots of bad stuff in the past together, but it's time to do what's right. And instead of being out till 3 in the morning, partying all night long and whatever, you'll be out and you'll pray when it's time for prayer, together. Nobody said you can't have fun. Nobody said you can't laugh and enjoy yourself and play sports, but without going against what God has asked of us. Aren't you craving to be like at tufail and bring your friends closer to God and have all their good deeds in your balance? So at tufail took Abu Huraira and they went to see the Prophet. The Prophet told him, What's wrong Tufail? What brought you back? Tufail is like Prophet of God, big time disbelief and arrogance. Those rejected Islam and they refused to believe. He's come to the Prophet all charged up and he's complaining to him. You know, they're hopeless. They got no hope in them. Tufal continues, And adultery is widespread amongst them. Does this sound familiar, people? So the Prophet got up and raised his hands to the sky to make dua. When Tufal saw this, he says, I thought the Prophet was going to ask God to curse my tribe. You know, because Tufal came all ticked off and annoyed with them. So he put his hands on his head and cried, Oh my tribe, my tribe, the Prophet's gonna pray against you. Do you see the love and affection he has towards his family and relatives and his people? He didn't say, let them all die, they deserve it. They don't believe so they can all go to hell. No, man, that's not what a Muslim is about. The Muslim is driven by love, bro. The Muslim's heart is full of hope that people would be guided. On that note, what do you think the Prophet said when he raised his hands to the sky? <laughs>